Seven. Correct. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of K9 TV. We are so excited to have you here with us on this brilliant new project. We kick off the series here in Milton Keynes at the Medical Detection Dog Training Centre where dogs are trained to smell the scent of human diseases, such as cancer. Let's go. Cool. We're now going to speak with dog trainer Rob Harris. Hello. Hi. How are you, Rob? Okay. So my first question is, why train dogs to be biodetection dogs? Well, the reason we've been involved in this training for the last number of years is due to the current processes for diagnosing cancer in the medical community. One of the things that we're struggling with still is early diagnosis and reliable diagnosis. So what we're finding through our research is that dogs have this incredible capability to be able to detect this disease. And what we're hoping to do is translate some of them findings into some modern technologies that's able to do that job. It's such a fantastic theory and you guys are putting it into to practice day in, day out and the success rate's great. but. Tell us about a dog that might not make the cut. Well, some of the dogs, obviously, that we've got here are incredibly special. Their, their sense of smell is second to none. Unfortunately, not all dogs are able to do this job. Some don't enjoy it. Some are not temperamentally sound to come in and do it. We have a really stringent assessment in the beginning. We have an eight-week basic program where we assess just the standard capability. Can the dog problem solve? Does it enjoy the work? What type of reward does it want? And then we go into this training phase for the actual condition we're working with. Can you give us an idea of some of the training methods you use? Yeah, so we predominantly use food as a reward. And we do use some toy as well. But what we find is the dogs that are actually toy motivated, they get tired quite quickly. We need a dog that's not panting when it's searching. It needs to have its mouth shut to be able to use this fantastic olfactory sense of smell. The way that we normally approach it is through clicker training. So we show the dog what the odour is, we obviously start the click and reward process to that, and then we start to build up a complex discrimination process. And that's where our training really comes into its own. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what some of the dogs can do. So should we go into the training room and uh, you can demonstrate some of the dogs? Absolutely. So what will happen is the pot, the similar pot to what's on the side there, you get a pot out into it, and then as a urine sample it gets dropped inside. Kizzy works without the lid on, and Florian works with the lid on. Half a mil to one mil of urine. We got a main reinforcement for detection of cancer but uniquely in scent work we also reward the dog equally for telling us there's nothing there. So this side, the dogs never come into contact with people. It's always via a sample of some point. And at the moment, it's all currently for research. So it's trying to find out what a disease smells like. And then can that be translated into a, you know, a dog screening process, which I think scalability is an issue with that. Or can we work with modern technology to try and develop another way, harnessing the dog's sense of smell to be able to develop a new test. Correct. This is also an aggressive cancer, this one. 
So this is in the later stages. So you could have a very large tumour with a very low aggressiveness or a very small tumour with a very high aggressiveness. So these are all the things that we have to be aware of. So the dogs are trained to do across the board at the moment. There's seven, I think it's 17 genetic different types of prostate cancer. You think all these things that we're asking the dog to do, let alone being low odour. We're now going to speak with Chris, who is the dog supply and training manager here at the Medical Detection Centre. Let's go. Hello. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. you. Right? Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good. So basically, we're just going to start off with how you guys started. Yeah, no, we started it's our 11th year. Um, so we're a very small but young and exciting charity. Um, the idea of Medical Detection Dogs um, started with Claire Guest, CEO and founder of the charity. And it initially started through anecdotal stories from people that had pet dogs, where they were getting reports where dogs were paying their owners attention or suddenly behaving very strangely. And they would go along to, to a specialist and they would be diagnosed with some type of cancer. So this really sort of got her attention and she investigated more. And initially it started in Claire's, in Claire's kitchen. So the charity over 11 years has grown tremendously. We've got about 60 staff now, and we've got five, six hundred volunteers, I think. It's such a fantastic facility, like we just said, but how do the dogs work through this process then? So give us a little bit from maybe supplying the puppy or, or the dog and taking it through to being qualified. Yeah, sure. Puppies will come to us about eight weeks of age. I get the lucky job, I go out and select them. So I'm assessing them, looking at their qualities, their characteristics at that age. They will then come back and live with a volunteer socialiser. They will have that puppy till about 12, 14, 16 months of age. The key role is really developing, allowing that puppy to grow, behave like a dog, socialise it, but also start to get it interested in using its nose, start to get it problem solving and thinking for itself. What's the next stage up? From that? From, from this, what we'd like to do next, Steve? Uh, probably take away some of the visual cues so that we might take him out of a room so he hasn't seen us go and hide things. And he comes in and, and looking to see if he's going to start naturally investigating the environment a little bit more and also reducing the, the size of the odour. And then they will go through to the particular service that they've been chosen for. So they would then go through to the bar detection team where we would carry out around about an eight week training period really sort of looking how well do they use their nose, how well do they problem solve, um, and then from there we would then pass them on to a, pro a project, and then we've got several projects running at, at one time. So talk about some of the breeds that you've got. Let us know yeah, more about Yeah, majority that. of the breeds are Labradors. We've got working Cocker Spaniels out there. We've got a few Golden Retriever Cross Labs. Um, we've also got a Hungarian Wiesler. She's always one of these dogs that, when she works, she works fantastically well and you're just hoping you've got her on the right day. It may be that it's very good on problem solving for you, but actually isn't very consistently been able to do a trial. But majority of them are, are, are your Labradors um, or your Labrador cross um, golden retrievers and your working cockers. They've got the drive, they've got the use of nose, they've got the character that we like. But as a charity, we also recognise other breeds can, can do it. Now, one thing I have noticed around here, there's no kennels. Mm -hmm. And actually walking through the halls, there's dogs just lying on beds, chilling, yeah, yeah. and people are in the office and they've got their dogs sitting with them. Um, why haven't you got kennels? We really feel that for the, for the quality of the dog, and to get the best out of the dog. We don't need to have kennels. We've got a great, again, network of volunteers that live locally. So the dogs will go home to them every night. They will then come here. So it's like taking your kids to school. They'll come here to learn. The dogs, we want them to enjoy people. We want them to enjoy life. 
So having that home life just makes them sort of fulfill their role and what they are as a dog and what they need as a dog. So when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that some people are worried about coming and seeing this facility just in case a dog takes some kind of interest in them and they think, oh, is there something wrong with me? Yeah, Talk yeah. me through that. Yeah, that's not the case. Obviously, our dogs are trained to work on clinical samples and that's really, really important because if they were to search you what, what, and they give some indication, what could it be? We don't know, the dog doesn't know. Um, so people don't need to worry about that. It's a big myth out there that our dogs are trained to work on people. That would be ethically incorrect. Now, one thing I find really surprising, I've learned so much today, but it's not government funded. It is all based on people's donations, which really, really shocked me. Yeah, no, no government funding at all. So again, you know, everyone out there that supports us and that, you know, donates money to us, legacies to us, you can see how we're using the money. And it is so, so important for us to carry on the research, for us to support medical science, for us to train our assistance dogs. We couldn't do it again without, without that funding. We don't have a, a reliable income coming in. One last question. Where do you see you guys in a few years' time? What does the future hold? It's a really, really exciting future. The work that we're doing in the biodetection team around the, the different types of cancers, uh, malaria and Parkinson's, we're really sort of hoping that we're going to be able to support medical science and help find an earlier intervention um, and support earlier diagnosis as well for many of these conditions. Oh, thank you so exciting. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yes. It's a pleasure. people, we're going to swap dogs and say hello to each other's dogs and we can discuss what is and is not appropriate for these dogs when they're out greeting people. Something that I think is a really nice idea here is that they have the Remembrance Garden where any dogs or people that have been affected by anything that's investigated here can be celebrated. your work and wanted to get involved how could they do that well if you want to take it as a career then obviously keep an eye on our website other than that one of the biggest things we need is fundraising we need people to be out there spreading the word about what we do you can get involved in giving talks and we'll train you to do that you can man a, a stand somewhere and just talk about the work that we do or just generally coming here and volunteering and being able to fulfill some of the roles we have people that do volunteer dog walking we have people that man the reception that are able to answer phones for us so that sort of engagement is really what we're looking for are you smiling are you smiling huh? Well, what an incredible and informative day it has been. I want to say a massive thank you to the Medical Detection Dogs team for allowing us to come to their facility. It's great. As we walk through the offices to make our way home, it's fantastic to see just how happy the dogs are turning up to work on a day-to-day -day basis. I think you'll agree with me. It has been a great first episode. Please, please like, comment and share. <laughs>